shape or form. 23 minutes to five. What price a brand? Now, not much it seems anymore. Are you still motivated by well-known brands when you go shopping for electronic products or, or white goods? The big names are involved in a real fight for market share with no names and the power and influence of the big names. It doesn't seem to carry the weight it used to in days past. Someone who understands this battle between the big names and no names better than most is Ruslan Kogan. He's founder of Kogan, online retailer of electronics goods, and there's a very, very real rival of Harvey Norman. And he joins us now. Hi, Ruslan. G'day, Peter. How are you? I'm not too bad at all, thank you. What motivates people more these days? Is it the brand or is it the price? Well, look, if you look at the market, say, 20 years ago, the brand is all people had to go by. that say, well, oh, it's a Sony, so it must be good. Whereas these days, everything's a Google search away. People can do a Google search, compare products, compare brands they've never heard of, compare the specs and make a much better decision with the information available to them. So whereas... 20 years ago, brands could hike up their prices because people knew nothing better than to trust the brand. These days, people can read about what people are saying about various products on Facebook, through Twitter, through blogs, online, through Google searches. So it really comes down to what is the actual product, how good is it, what reviews are there for it, and things like that. So we're seeing people move away from just the emotional attachment to brands and more towards the objective information about products. It's interesting, isn't it? Because that was going to be my next question. The one comfort factor you got with a brand is that if you had some issues after purchasing the product, you had after-sales service that you could rely on. But now with that information that's available, are you suggesting now that people are comforted with that information that is available and that allows them to go away and buy these no-names? I think even more so that's the case these days. Like at Kogan, we can't afford an upset customer because an upset customer could go onto Facebook, onto Twitter, onto our blog, you know, write their own blog. It's full transparency online. It's the equivalent of giving every customer a megaphone. So if anyone's concerned about the service at Kogan, they can do a quick Google search, read what all our hundreds of thousands of other customers have said about the products and make an educated decision. Gee, that's interesting hearing that, isn't it? Because the one, the one aspect of, of, of the computer age today is that it gives you access or accessibility to such a large clientele, but in the same breath, it also allows them to, to provide warnings of your product or other product. It's interesting, isn't it, that that information is so much about. With a product, with, with a business like yours, which has not been going all that long, how, now if I go away and buy something from Kogan and it comes from China or wherever else, does it come yeah. directly from China, directly to my door, or do you bring it into Australia first of all and then get it delivered from, from like a storage facility in Australia to my home? Yeah, well, we've been going for six years now and had hundreds of thousands of customers. So what happens is Kogan products are all designed in Australia and they're assembled in China using components from around the world. We'll send containers to Australia of all the Kogan TVs. They go into our logistics facility here in Melbourne and then get sent directly from there to the consumer. So now, it's all it... happening out of our warehouse in Melbourne. Now, it's always been suggested or been some sort of focal on. I don't know whether this has been driven by you guys or not, but the, the Kogan product is exactly the same as the big name, except it just doesn't have their badge on it. Is it true that your product comes out of exactly the same factories as where the big names do? Yeah, the thing with TVs is uh, the actual LCD panel is a major component and there's only a few companies making LCD panels and they're like your Sharp, Samsung, Hitachi and um, LG and Kogan TVs use panels from LG, they use panels from Samsung and all the big manufacturers so yeah the major components does only come from a, a few different factories and um, if you look at all the people that have reviewed our TVs we've been getting some pretty good reviews. Alright just finally now I go away, get onto the Kogan website and I go away and buy a big TV, 52 inch uh, TV, how long then before that TV is delivered to my home? Uh, you'll have it tomorrow. Are you serious? Yeah, so and it's all, you know, people want gratification very quickly when they buy online, and we've spent a lot of time and energy into our processes and our facilities and our logistics capability because people want to have their stuff fast. And, and, so, and, and, um, and that's the difference now is from going, walking to a retail store now as to doing it online is that actual speed of delivery. So that's just as important as the size of the range that you provide online, is it? 
Exactly. And, you know, we, we're constantly listening to customers on our Facebook page and on Twitter, and that was one of the major concerns from people shopping online. So we've made sure that we spent a lot of time and energy ensuring people get their products as quickly as possible. Do you ever see the day when, you, when you'd have a retail uh, shop somewhere in Australia? Yeah, I get asked that all the time, but that would be taking our business back a few steps. <laughs> it's an amazing answer to that question. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Thanks, Peter. Russell and Kogan, they're founder of Kogan, online retailer of electronic goods and rival of Harvey Norman, 9690693.